Voices of Inner Strength Gospel Choir actually had its origins in the Black Student Alliance Choir, a choir that I had the honor and privilege of being the founding director of back in the spring of 1979. At the time, there were only a handful of African-American students enrolled in the college, but we were a small and dedicated and tenacious group who wanted to come together and sing for the sheer joy of making music. During that period, it was very common for gospel choirs to be formed on university campuses, especially those without large African-American populations. I remember we sang our first worship service as the guest choir for university worship, which at the time was held in the lobby of White Hall because Cannon Chapel hadn't been built yet. Those early years were marked by a sense of enthusiasm and praise and unbridled joy. So overwhelmingly was the choir accepted by the university that Dr. Don Shockley, the university chaplain, decided that a name change was imperative. And in 1981, a resolution was passed renaming the choir the Emory University Gospel Choir. And with that, it became its own independent student organization focused on gospel music and ministry. This proved to be a very positive move for the choir. People became more aware of what type of music to expect, and more importantly, the membership became open to all students at the university, not just those in the college. Reverend Shockley hired a director for us, uh, Mr. Alan Green, and there were students who were instrumentalists that accompanied the choir. And we had our first concert in the spring. And I remember when we were sitting around thinking about a name of the organization and voting on the name for Voices of Inner Strength. Being a part of that, I had no idea that what we were doing was laying a foundation for something that would last for so long. In 1986, the choir was blessed with the talents and strong will of yet another director, the Reverend Clayton Smith. Under his direction, the choir embarked on their first choir tour. They were, it was already a strong group. And Sam um, Sanders and Charles Westmoreland um, were the directors at the time that I came. And they were both absolutely delightful and fun. Um, I was the director. Uh, then Charles Westmoreland became the director. And after when Charles came on board, he brought Mari on to be his accompanist. So when I came back, I said it made sense for him to just stay there as the musician because I knew his skill set, I knew his personality, I knew his heart for ministry, I knew his heart for people, and he already had a connection with the choir. So when my uh, work became even more grueling, and when I talked to Maury and said, hey, I'm, I have to make this transition, before he even said, yes, I'm interested, I just felt that it was just the right fit. And as you can see, 25 years later, he's still there. How much does it cost to repay the life you gave for me? We had to plan everything from A to Z. I'm talking about traveling with over a hundred students. I believe that when we went to um, St. Thomas, I think there were 118 students on that trip. That's a lot of people. 
And so, you know, if you're on a plane that has 200 people, we had over 100, we had half the plane. And so we always booked our seats together. So we got on the plane from like the business section all the way almost to the back. You know, we had the plane. And so when they came on, they saw these black and brown and red faces. And uh, who, who are these people? They are Emory University students on tour spreading the gospel. Uh, my background is Pentecostal. So what I brought to the table was fire and excitement. <laughs> there was a lot of hand clapping, foot stumping, singing out hallelujahs. <laughs> it was like the Blues Brothers <laughs> without the cartwheels. In the audience, you would see people standing up, people just rocking from side to side you actually became a part of a concert, you became a worship experience. Just to hear the gospel music and the vocalizing with that African history and chords and accompaniment was just really exciting, really unique sound to Canon Chapel. When they really get into what they're doing, you can see that they, you know, they are singing um, my mom, my grandmother used to say, speak from your stomach. And I wonder, how do you speak from your stomach, Granny? They were speaking from their stomach. They were singing and uh, putting all they had in it. There would be times when the community really needed comfort and the voices could give expression to that. There were times that the community needed stabilization and the voices could give expression to that. And there were times that the voices were just purely uplifting and inspiring. I made sure that the music was had, had a message, not just do it because it had a good beat, but make sure that the message was very biblically sound, biblically based. Um, <clears throat> Maury is a pastor. He is a minister. When the choir gets together for practice, there's a prayer. And uh, so that sets the tone for the practice. And to have them come together and be able to spread this message through Maury Alves, oh, you have a great, great product here. I think they were looking for a fellowship, a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And although it's it's not a fraternity, it's not a sorority, but you felt that there was some type of connection. And the great thing about it is, is that it was a spiritual connection. You know, if you're struggling with something, maybe your grades aren't good, or maybe you've lost a family member and uh, life is what I'll call it. And so, you had that community, that family. Voices became a family. And that family helped, you know, helped you make it on campus. If I'm sitting in the audience and I'm looking at the choir, the student on the end might be a pre-med student. The student next to that person might be a music major. Then there might be an education major. So if you look at the broad, uh, landscape of the choir. You had people who had desires to work in all areas of the world. It's about love, about diversity, inclusion, about caring. But one thing that was consistent throughout that choir, and I know it's the same today, was there's love, love for Christ and love for each other. Maury did an excellent job of um, 
institutionalizing the voices in a really positive way that gave it both grounded its history and gave it a legacy. I think the significance for me was realizing that something that I felt strongly about, that I really cared about for the time that I was in the choir, was also something that people cared about much later. I certainly had no idea that it would last for 40 years. And so I, I just feel an immense amount of pride for being a part of something that's lasted for so long. And um, I'm hoping that other people will feel as strongly as I do that we want to make sure that it lasts for another 40 years. Mm -hmm.